finna get right with inside advice. Some ill entertainment, industry insight. Listen, it's like sitting, building up on the yard. HU, the bison chats, the vanguard. HU? You know. What's up? <laughs> Welcome back to the Yard and the Bison Chats. I'm your host, Rod Email, a graduate of Howard University. Took a while, but I did it. <laughs> the Bison Chats is a podcast where we interview an HU Bison in the entertainment industry. This podcast is in association with the Kelly R. Griffin Bison Project. From Howard to Hollywood Cycle 2, a feature film project that will be written, produced, directed by, and starring HU Bison. Usually you would hear gurgling or pouring. That means it's noon somewhere and we are doing social drinking in the studio. But for some reason, I am on the wagon. But that doesn't mean you in the Bison Chat audience <laughs> cannot play the Bison Chat's drinking game. In which each and every time you hear the word bison, you take a shot of an alcoholic beverage. Not juice, not water, alcohol. So get your drink, get your shot glasses. Bison, 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 you are already behind. You better catch up. Today on the Bison Chats, we have a man who is, of course, a Howard graduate, um, a man, of, a native of Columbus, Ohio, and an actor with numerous credits to his um, career, and he has to deal with contentious Morehouse guys. I don't know. <laughs> he has Morehouse friends. Mm. I, don't, I don't know how that happened. Um, we welcome Mr. Leonard Thomas. What up, what up? Bison, 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 bison. <laughs> you better get it on. If you buy Leonard said you need to get your drink on. Get your drink on. It, man, I know you're listening. You ain't at the gym. You at home listening to the podcast. Get your drink on. Go to the cupboard and get you some scotch. Oh, man. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. It's a pleasure to be here, man. Yeah, um, I was, like I said, when I realized, I said, I realized, oh, my God, this dude. I've seen this dude so much through my life. Like, the first time I saw you was, well, I can't say for anybody else, but for me, was School Days. Yeah. Okay, I don't mm -hmm. know when your debut was, but that, that was the first one. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Oh, you won a G5G. Yes, sir. Yes, man. That was uh, the darkest one. Yes. <laughs> you, you know what? You, you know what? That is a point. That is a very point because you stood out. You That's were, right. it was like you were the only dark one, maybe. Yes, <laughs> I <that> was. <laughs> Wow, mm -hmm. man. Uh, yes, you were. Um, you've been in movies like Freedom Land, uh, The Negotiator, uh, my favorite, Drop Squad. Okay, okay. Uh, Drop Squad, which I still am looking for on DVD because somebody stole my copy. Uh, you got to get that. I got to get that. You got to get that. And wait, your character's Wait, you played a character named Rod. Was it? One of those, one of your mini films you played. More the better, more better blues. More better. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Wait, yo, whip, yeah, wake up, yeah, yo, whip his ass, uh, <laughs> man. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of like, uh, yeah, I'm kind of bright eyed, like, dude. Like, I ain't gonna lie, you know what I mean? I ain't gonna lie for real. And I'm man enough to say, I was like that dude, like when I when we was on um, school days, like. You know when he walk in the room, you need to put your hand handcuff your old lady, cause. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what I'm mean? saying? I went to Howard University. That's what I'm saying. I say, <laughs> I say, man, I say, Wesley had kind of helped out. And like, I was like, that dude, I know he's using that to his advantage. I'm like, he, I, hey, I bet. No comment? No comment? Because <laughs> there are some Howard graduates listening, some ladies that you might have, well, you know, mm -hmm. that's not even. Bethune here. Cook, man? Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the quad, the quad. Ahead. Oh my Meridian. God! Meridian. Well, you, they didn't call you Spider Man because Lord knows I've known many guys no. scaling them walls. No. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Oh my God, bro! I scaled no walls. You scaled no walls? No. You walk in the front door. Front door <laughs> and leave out the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is too fun. This is too fun. Um, so what's going on with you, brother? I'm just out here uh, grinding, man. Grinding. Grinding. Because it is a grind. Man. I'm a black man. I gotta grind. Yeah, dude. You know. You it, hear me? You say it ain't like being. It ain't like being John Cryer, huh? No, <laughs> no. Brother, um, what? Okay, you're from Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Did you always want to be an actor? Yes. Wow. Um, I I started doing theater in elementary school and junior high school, and I always played sports. So in my mind, 
I said, okay, I'll play sports, and then I'm finished. When I retire from playing sports, I'll continue my acting career, in my mind. Yeah, you could be like, well, not like O.J. Simpson, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, not, but you know. No, the funny part is because people say, because I, I was up for, to play O.J. like three different times in three different movies. Are you serious? Oh, I'm dead serious. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead. Dead. Wow. No pun intended. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm dead serious. And, uh, you know, it's like, oh, my God, you look just like OJ. That's no, not a good thing. That's not a good thing. Right. That's, that's, not, that's not a compliment. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no. So, you know, but I was only 5'6", 135 coming out of high school playing quarterback. Okay. So, you know, they were like, you can't, you can't. Let's get straight. I just want, and I want to state, you are, you were born in Muskegee, Oklahoma. Muskogee, Muskogee Oklahoma. Muskogee, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Muskogee, That's okay. You Oklahoma. ain't from there, I understand. I am not. <laughs> I am not. Um, I, you moved to Columbus, Ohio. Which like at two or three. So, really, you are, you're a Columbus, Ohio. Buckeye. A Buckeye. Yeah. Buckeye. A Sooner Buckeye. A Sooner, ooh, a Sooner Buckeye. Mm. That's a combination for your ass. Those right? some big boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like you said, you started acting when you were in. In grade school, you, yeah. you, you, you knew then. Uh, dude, I used to watch every movie. You know, it, I watched everything. Musicals, comedies, everything. And I just sit there and be like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I kept looking for us, and there was nobody. There was none of us. So I'm watching, yeah. you know, Jackie Gleason and, you yeah. know, Soupy Sales and, you wow. know. Yeah. I'm doing Jerry Lewis, Dean Martin. I'm doing that. Elvis that, Presley. That's the stuff. We, you know I mean, that was the stuff. Elvis that, Presley for the girls, but that's yes. okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's, uh, but there have been so many, like, um, we had interviewed um, a guy, Roland Lewis, Buddy Lewis. I don't know if you yeah. know Buddy, Buddy. Yeah. And the Q Dog. Yes. We mm-hmm. also know another guy, right. um, Kevin Grievous. We interviewed him and both mm-hmm. of them. I mean, they were both. Microbiology major. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so like, I like, wasn't. No, no, I wasn't. No. So it's like they had. I mean, they had an epiphany later. Yeah, like you. I you, knew you come in here. Yeah. You, you. Dare I say? Am I right? You're the first that says I knew. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Karen Molina. Nikita. Nikita, Nikita yeah, knew. In Dallas, Dallas and Arthur. Yeah. Arthur. Yeah, they all went in as majors, knowing that they were going okay. into the business. So no. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's why I'm not drinking. That's why I'm not drinking during this podcast. Bison, bison, bison. Bison, 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 bison. bison. Um, okay, let's talk about that. But, but me, like my um, friend, Karen, we majored in fine arts. We majored in theater. Wow. We yeah. came in majoring in theater. Oh, so you know, you're friends with Karen Molina? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. We went to school together. Okay, you were in at the same time. Yeah. Um, so your Howard days. Here um, you go. Check this out. So uh-huh. here's the crazy part. So... Because I was an athlete, I was the first athlete ever to major in the College of Fine Arts. That has never happened before. They don't mix. They don't no, mix. They don't. That is all. not something that you is, can I'm work sorry, out. That, they don't. They don't no, mix. It does not no. mix at all. I just now, mind about you, that. College of Fine Arts is right behind the stadium. <laughs> yeah, okay? but you could easily get to practice, but still. You, they don't mix. So the I didn't realize that because I played football and I acted in high school. So I thought it was just, you know, the natural and thing. And because I've got to ask, since we know who the coach was, Floyd Keith at the yeah. time. How did you explain to Floyd Keith? Like well, any of your coaches. Here you go. Here's the, here's the thing. I would leave dance class. Nice. In tight. Nice. Leotard. Nice. And because it was pushing the time, I'm running across the field. In a leotard. In a leotard. And then we're getting a dressing room, the locker room. And, you know, the first day I was like, what the hell's going on? We got a fruitcake up in here. But my cousins, thank God for my family, linebacker, quarterback, wide receiver, they're all there. So they were like, leave him alone. He's good. Mm-hmm. He's good. He's cool. He know what he's doing. He's a little different, but leave him alone. <laughs> Little did we know Under Armour would make millions off those mm. leotards later in life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not everyone has a leotard. Right. Not exactly. Everyone walking around in a cat suit now, mm-hmm. but still at that point. So you know what? So it was it was Kudo. a major, major Kudo change. You, yeah. you, you, <laughs> here's, a, uh, here's another thing. So since I'm the first and I went through the pioneering stages of an athlete actually even walking into the fine arts building, because they didn't do that either. Mm-hmm. All they did was wait outside. For the girls to come out, but they never entered in. Yes. So I, w- I uh, would leave practice and go back to rehearsal in the theater. And then once, I think my freshman year, football players started coming over. Because 
number one, I'll be doing pirouettes on the football field because I didn't care. Mm-hmm. I was free. You know what I'm saying? I, I knew who free. I was. I knew who I was. <laughs> I was a free black man. God damn it. I'm Leonard like, Thomas, God damn it. <laughs> so they were like, you know, there's something about this dance you're doing because it gives you the agility and it allows you to move mm-hmm. left or right. So they start taking classes. Yeah, well, I mean, what's the name was doing at that time too, wasn't it? Who? Um, with the Steelers, wasn't Lin Swan? Yes, yeah, Lin Swan yes, was saying, yes. Yeah. And uh, and uh, the Bears too, Galt. Galt. Okay, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. So then they started coming over, but at the end of my um, first semester, I had to sit down with the dean of uh, the drum department mm-hmm. and the coach. And they were like, you know what? Uh, you have That's to choose. That's the most interesting. That must be the most interesting conversation of the dean of the dean of the drama school yeah. and the coach. Coach, I'm talking about you got to choose because you know it's too time consuming. Because you know with the football team, as you know, mm-hmm. they want you to eat together, read together, together, think together. They want you to all. I'm like, I gotta go. It's I got a, rehearsal. No individual. You know, you're, no. You're part of a, you're part of a group. exactly. Yes. And I'm like, no, I can't do that. And then that's when I said, um, I can be an athlete till I'm probably around thirty, maybe if I don't get hurt. Yeah, I can be an actor my whole life. True. So I'm going to go with the actor, and y'all can have the football. Yes. And that's how we just continued my career. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they wasn't ready for it. They, they wasn't ready. ready for yeah. it. Man. They wasn't ready. Wow. And they had it. Well, you know what? They weren't drama. I just thought about it. They had guys in fine arts when I was there, but they were in, like, regular art. Like, graphic oh, art. Oh, visual. Graphic, visual. Yeah. Visual. And musicians. You know. I'm sorry. Yes. It was me. I was in it. Shit, that's why. <laughs> I was in it freshman semester. I was in that department. I remember, mm-hmm. yeah, I saw one of the Introduction theater. to arts or something? My, look, I was in that. That was my major. And I remember a guy oh. coming out from the theater department, and he had on a pair of, like, like jeans, and he had, and he, he was being held up by a piece of rope, mm-hmm. and he was putting water in his face. And I was sitting there, and I looked at him, and I said, I don't need to be in this building. <laughs> I don't know what they, I think, I guess he was getting ready for audition for a play, but I said, I really don't need to be in this building. I didn't know what the hell it is. And I mean, I still came full circle back to it, but mm-hmm. that was not, I wasn't ready at that point. But see, that's the same thing with white people. Uh, They're not ready for us. And, and so since they don't understand us, they do that. Oh, I can't handle this right now. I can't now. handle this. Yeah, yeah. I was like. The I, same thing. Yeah, so I, yeah. Because yeah, we were different. We had no problem busting out in a 16 count choreography in the middle of the yard. We don't care. We didn't care, you know, because what y'all going to do? Y'all got to deal with us. And we wasn't going anywhere. That, man. We loved it, and plus we had all the women there, so and all the ladies, yeah. <laughs> and you ready for this? Not only we had all the ladies, but there was probably only two straight men in there. Leonard, right? Two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was good. So I know why Howard. Uh, I was going to ask: Was Howard in a hotel or a bookstore when you were there? It was a hotel. Much, it was a hotel. It was a hotel. Yeah. Yeah, it was a hotel with there. roaches. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait. No, don't say that. No, really. Oh, we're keeping it real, right? <laughs> wait, wait. I mean, I, I'm just checking. Wait, wait. wait. How it was? It was. not You know what? When Dude, I worked in. I worked there. Oh, yes. Really? Yes, I was a waiter. Yes. Wow. Yes. How you doing, man? Take your order. No. <laughs> you know, I never. I mean, that's where they held recruits at. Um, and they kept the recruits there. But I'm just saying. Wow. And I would, I would go up there and get a recruit, but I. Oh, that's disappointing. Mm. I did not know that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Oh. Man, that's just. It did. I always thought the how it is. When I first, I said, this is cool. We have a, our own hotel. Yeah, we did. I mean, we had our own hotel. Our and own roaches. And our own roaches. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just blew that little bubble, it didn't it? Did. Uh, <laughs> wait, so your freshman dorm, were you in Cook? Yes. Oh, my God. Where'd you stay? What room? Uh,. Well, you know, I actually had the end room on the first floor. I was on 140 D section. I was 130, 132. <laughs> I'm loving this. Oh, God. Um, you rem- Were you a member of fraternity? Me, fight me. I heard that sitting under that tree. But see, here's the problem again. Uh-huh. There was no reason, no motivation for me to join a fraternity because I'm from a family of eight. Mm-hmm. That's a crew all by itself. Uh-huh. I was on the football team. That's a crew all by itself. And wow. then I was in fine arts. That's a whole nother crew. So I was good. Wow. Where, where, where are you in the eight? Where are you in the eight? In the middle. You're in the middle? Mona in the middle. No, in the middle. <laughs> um, how many There's three brothers? girls three on girls. top, three girls on the bottom, and my twin brother. Oh, wait. There's two of you? Wait. Hold well, on. No, I didn't know this one. Wait. There's two of you? Wait. Yes. Leonard and Lawrence. Wow. Wait. So did Lawrence come to Howard? No. 
Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> We're night and day. We're night and day. Wow. We're opposite. Completely opposite. Yeah. So did you enjoy your little time in Cook? The time that you were there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it was Party it's Central. Cook. Yeah, it's Cook Hall. Oh, my God. I made money in the bathroom. <laughs> Which leads to my next question. <laughs> How'd you make money in the bathroom? Cutting hair. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because I was going to ask you, when did your Howard Hustle kick, kick in? Like, that one day, like, look, I need some money. And I guess yes. you started cutting it. Mm-hmm. And that, that's as far as it went. You didn't have to go do nothing on, on the dark side, huh? I was there, too. Okay, you on the dark side? Yeah. I put it like this. <laughs> People in uniform <laughs> were knocking on my door. Leonard, Leonard, Leonard. I'm just saying, hey, <laughs> it's called survival. I heard that. And, you know, it was that was a commodity and, you know. Understood. Um, <laughs> Maybe good at math. <laughs> Maybe good at math. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, you, you, did you... <laughs> It made you good at ounces, metric. I mean, you, that's right. That's you, right. You went to the metric system. Hey, I heard that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, what? let us talk your Howard to Hollywood story. I mean, tell us a little bit about your. I don't know. Productions maybe at Howard and what when you graduated said. All right, what am I do next? Well, first of all, uh, I knew what I was doing. You knew what you were doing. Yeah, it was just a matter of uh, letting go because for some reason at Howard. They didn't want you to go out and work. And that was befuddling to I me. I've always heard that about the theater department. They it's didn't like, want you out and go out and work. Wait a minute. You just want us to do your play? And that's it? I mean, at what point are we trained to go work? Yes. And they looked down on that. And that was a big issue for me. Yeah. Because, see, I was the radical one. So I kind of tended to do my own thing. Whenever I well, felt you did like that it. With the yeah, we, we, absolutely. We, we kind of know so, where Leonard's going with this. So, <laughs> when I left Howard, I went straight to Los Angeles here. Okay. And um, I just knew it was time to do it, you know. Um, and I said, well, I'll come to LA because I can concentrate on my craft. I, there's family here, mm-hmm. I have some cousins here. Mm-hmm. You know, I can just get acclimated and pursue. I get here and uh, bless my family's heart. They uh, had a whole other agenda for me. They wanted me to go into real estate. And they thought I was chasing a pipe dream and wasting my time. Dude, I would be in Gardena. I would catch a bus for two hours to go to an audition in Studio City. Gardena? Yeah. Yeah. Pre-Uber. Right. (laughs) Pre-Uber, boy. Pre-everything, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And here's the crazy part. I went and auditioned for the Omaha City Ballet Company. Why? Because I was starving, and they was wow. hiring. And they was hiring. Yeah, man. It was crazy. And I went in there and said, but white people, I'm the only brother. You know, and I'm like, whatever, let's do this. Let's do this. Of course, I didn't get the job, but I did it, you know, and it was just a matter of just going out and trying to find out what's out here and how can I fit in, you know, because I didn't come from a family of actors. I was the only one in my family. I'm the only one in my whole lineage to do this. Yes, they do this yeah so it was not something i could yo can you hook me up or can you show me the way it was just me so when i got out here in um 83 the third day i got out here i went to uh inner city cultural center which is a facility uh in la like new hampshire and pico and that's where all the black theater was happening and i went over there and i took a dance class mm-hmm. because and the reason why let me talk about dance real quick mm-hmm. because dancing was a way to work just like set building was a way to work. And these are skills that we learned at Howard. Howard. So I was taking all these skills that I learned and trying to get paid until I get that. Until you t- get that? Yes. Dead. Yes. Mm-hmm. That way I'm not, you know, in somebody's corporate office doing nothing. You know, and at least you're around it. And as long as you're around it, then there's a possibility that you can create an opportunity to work. Exactly. So the third day I was there, I got in a musical. What was the musical? Uh, T.J. Swan. Forrest Whitaker was in it. Peggy Blow was in it. Um, uh, Cliff Rockmore Sr. directed it. And Knowing how bad I am when you said T.J. Swan, I, I shuddered. Because you of the got wine. thirsty, right? Yeah, I, thought about, I, thought about the wine. I thought about the wine, the rotten good wine. That's so bad that I thought about that. T.J. Swan, they made a... Oh, made bison, a bison, bison. Bison, bison, bison. They made a, they made a musical about T.J. Swan. I'm sorry. Yeah. Continue. So I did this musical, and uh, I thought I made it. You know, because... Third day? How do you, third day, you get a job, mm-hmm. you know? Well, it's a job, but you didn't get paid. Um, 
but you're working mm -hmm. and you know folks are coming to see you and they don't know you from adam but you're working so i thought i had right i thought i made it mm -hmm. and um it wasn't the case <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't the case it, it was not because once that once the show was over um it was like now what you're gonna do you know because the thing about this business you always have to continue to look well, for the work, next, work the next one because once this is over it's over you're starting over you're starting over. you have to start from scratch all over again yeah. once it's over you work is a job to find a job, and then it's a job to do it, and then it's a job to find another job. I mean, it's while a, you're in a job, you have to be con, kind well, of thinking sometimes. Well, about the it's kind of hard because when you're in a job, that's full time. Yeah. You, you're working eight hours a day, rehearsing mm -hmm. and stuff, so you really don't have time to go get or look for, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, uh, it's a grind. It's, it's a, grind. a constant grind. But, I mean, you know, I mean, as an actor, even, though you, even if you're, when you are working, you see somebody, it's like, hey, oh, you doing something? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, you, you are letting them know. I'm, I'm around. I should be finishing well, this up. Well, in New York, you can get away with that. But it's a little different out it's here. It's different out here. Yeah, because <clears throat> people are a little paranoid, insecure, and they don't like to share. Until after. Oh, man, you would have been great two weeks ago. Oh, I've you know seen, what I'm saying? I've, I've definitely seen that. That whole I, thing. Yeah. Because the other thing, too, you mentioned this before we started was, for some reason, people come in here and change who they are. They just transform into something totally different. I've I, Trust me, I've had friends that have come yeah. out here. It's like, hey, everybody would keep telling me, hey, you know Trey? And I was like, no, I don't know Trey. They said, mm -hmm. hey, he went to high school with me and literally graduated with me. I said, I don't know this Trey guy. And then I see the Trey, I say. That dude's name is Elijah. What, what is his name? I don't know. Right. Seriously, I've had that happen. Yeah. Like, I didn't like, dude came out and actually changed. Dude, there's the, people that came out here and didn't want nobody to know they went to Howard University. Really? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Really? You don't know me. We didn't go to school together. Don't, don't talk to me in public. Wow. Because, here you go, because if they found out that we went to school together, then they know their real age. Uh. And if you're perpetrating trying to play 19 and you're really 39... Or 29. That's how that mind is. Dude, it, if you're not grounded in right. something real and something that you can tap into on the regular, you're screwed, man. Then what, make, then what makes it, because you're telling me New York and L.A. too, what makes New York that much different? Why aren't they the same way out there? It's a different mindset. In New York, it's everybody's, everybody's <laughs> in. It's a networking. It's more of a family kind of, mm -hmm. everybody got talent. <laughs> Everybody got talent. <laughs> Most of them got talent. Uh -huh. So they're not a, worried about you taking their job. Because uh -huh. they have the mindset, what's for me is for me. You can't take my job. You can't take my job. You know job. what I'm saying? What's wow. for me is for me. And we're talking about theater actors, which is a whole other beast. That's a different Then Then this whole Somebody, is what you look like. It's just a model. Right. It's just saying yes. words in front. Okay, yes. a totally different So thing. it's totally different. So you're in L.A. and, okay, you, do you start auditioning? Do you get, how do you get representation? That's a whole other job. That's a whole nother job, <laughs> brother. Because here's the representation. Okay. And this is one thing that I always tell folks who, who come out of school, because we wouldn't told this. Picture, resume. They didn't teach us picture and resume in college. And they should have, because that's the business. They teach, that you, is, they, never, they teach you the show, but won't teach you the business. No. That's and the show was what? Four letters? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... Picture and resume. You kind of need that. It's kind of very important. It's like your calling card. Exactly. You really, really need that. And yeah. if they don't teach you how to put together a resume, what's a good headshot, what's a bad headshot, mm -hmm. those are just basic fundamental tools that you need that we should be getting in college. Hopefully, they're turning it around. They're fixing that problem yeah. now. You know? But the problem with the agent is nobody wants newbies unless, you know, they, they got white. a job. Or then, no, they're right. white. Oh, right. You're right. You're right. You know, but to come in trying to get an agent, uh, it, it's a grind mm -hmm. because you got to send out. I When I first got here, I had to go get like 200 pictures. And I went and got this, this sheet of all these agents on it and cast directors on it and, and uh, production companies on it. And you just do a massive mailing and you just yeah. hope, you know. Somebody will bite. Right. And so I did that. And then a couple bit, but then when you go in there, it's like, well, you really can't help me. You can't even help yourself, you know? So 
you know, then it's about where you are. Because to say you have an agent is one thing, but if your agent's not doing anything for you or doesn't have the juice or the clout to get you in an audition, that's a whole nother beast, yeah. you know? So, and then you got all these flim flam, fake ass people who are out here taking people's money, mm. you know? Yeah, come join my agency. Oh, by the way, we need 350 if you got to pay somebody to be your agent, that's not a real legitimate agent. That's you shouldn't have to ever pay anybody to be your agent. You know what I mean? Never, that's ever. That's a good thing to let people know. Absolutely. Because it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, they're scamming. It's a big scam here. I mean, I just, I, I mean, in general, the agent, and I mean, I'm only speaking from a writer's standpoint. It seems as though you get the successful agent when you happen to be successful. You know what I mean? You get but a better agent. You get a better with, agent. Yes. With, like, and yes. it seems as though it's still what's getting you the job is not the agent, but you here's are. The, here's the deal. But the, 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 what the agent does is gets you in the room yes. so you can get the job. Mm -hmm. This is real. I'm looking uh, for an agent right now because I'm sitting at home looking at Roots saying to myself, ain't nothing but black people. I didn't get an audition for Roots. Are you kidding me? I've been doing this for over 30 years. I couldn't get an audition for Roots or Underground. Anytime there's a slave movie, the brother got to get some. It's just, just an interview. At least, you know what I'm saying? At least see me, right? Get in a room, something. Yeah, come you on. You know? But that told me, okay, well, obviously my agent is not able Good to get me in the room. room. So, therefore, I need to move forward and get somebody to get me in the room because I shouldn't be missing out on productions and projects that are jumping off. That they're hiring people like me. Yeah. Black. You uh -huh. know? <laughs> Bison. Um, so... Uh -huh. I'm looking for a new agent right now because of that, because of that, because they can get you in a room and all agents can get you in a room because there's a list. It's called an A list, a B, B list, list a C uh, list, and others? we don't know who the fuck they are. Uh. List. You know what I mean? <laughs> and with us as black people, there's only four or five that they're going to see and they keep them on rotation. Keep you know, you got the Sam, you got the Denzel, then mm -hmm. you got the Wesley, then you got the Lawrence, then you got the Morgan, you got the Cuba Gooden Jr. You know, you now you got. Um, there's only like maybe ten that you keep saying all over again, over, over, again. And over again. Yeah, that's why I thank God for Spike Lee. Yes, I, I can't. I can't say that enough. Like you have a relationship. <laughs> yeah. You have a relationship with Morehouse men. Yeah, you're, you're friend, you have this friendship with more. Yeah. How does that go with being a Howard person? Working. Working. Uh, Morehouse was hiring. Morehouse was hiring. <laughs> hey, I ain't mad at you. Um, Here you go. Here's another thing. I went to see me and five of my classmates from Howard. Mm -hmm. We all went to go see She's Gotta Have It. Mm -hmm. And I came out there like, oh, my God, he needs my help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I said that. Uh -huh. I said that to them. I said, oh, my God, he needs me. He needs me. <laughs> And um, I said, I'm going to be in this next film. And they were like, yeah, Leonard, you should be in this next film. I'm not lying to you. This is us coming out of She's Gotta Have It. And then I find out that Robbie Reed is casting this movie for Spike Lee called School Days. And um, I call up, find Robbie Reed. I take her to church, hand her my picture and resume. I said, I got to get in a room. I got to get in a room. And she got me an audition. And I went to... Uh, hotel on sunset where he was holding auditions in his room mm -hmm. and the first thing i said when i went in here was like yo dude why do we have an audition in your room what oh, is god. that about oh god <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying i'm just saying because it's like dude why when your room auditioning you could have got a conference room or something we yeah, could have well, done it outside we in your room we in your room it's, and you know mm. and, the, and the other thing is me and uh Brand for ourselves, only two people ever went to a black college who did school days. Everybody else oh. went to other colleges, but me and Branford was the only one to a black college. And it's so wait, funny because okay, take Hold your time on. with that. I'm just we'll wait. wait. <laughs> we'll wait. He said no wait. Uh, 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 well, Sam, Sam, Sam went to Morehouse too. Sam went to Morehouse. Right. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito. No, no, no. What's his name? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. Who? Kadeem? No, not Daryl Bell. Who? Daryl Bell didn't no. Syracuse or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said that because when I got in the room, I you know he he knew I went to Howard, mm -hmm. and so he's like, "So you went to Howard?" I said, "Yeah, I went to Howard." H U, you know, he did it. <laughs> he doesn't have to do it later. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so 
<laughs> you know, it's like, so what you know about fraternity? Is I said, what? Come on, man. I went to Howard. Wait, I'll stop Greek it. show? Come on. And then I told him this little secret and it freaked him out. I said, let me tell you something. I used to teach choreography for these guys in the basement and nobody knows that. I used to give steps to the fraternities because mm. I didn't give a fuck. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so we'd be in the basement. He's like, well, let me see what you do. I said, okay. So I get up, got up in his room uh -huh. and started stepping. Uh -huh. You know, he was like, oh my God, he's just writing, 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 writing. Again, this is naive. He still ain't finished the damn script. <laughs> he, said, he still ain't finished the goddamn script. I'm huh? like, what is the idea? I didn't even exactly, think about that. Exactly. I'm like, what are you writing? He's just writing, writing. Because I, I, we did the pass the pussy, pass the pussy, pass oh the pussy. Oh my God. It's unbelievable. You know, and he was yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah. Just writing. And, and then I realized. Am I gonna get the job? Because you're writing. You, you write. Writing, you, you write you know? something. And I got the job. And if I'm correct, you were Doctor X-ray. Huh? You were Doctor uh, Big Brother Doctor X-ray. Big Brother General George Patton. Oh, you were George Sir. Patton. Yes. With the board. Yep. With the board. Okay. Yes. All right. My yeah. bad. I'm mm -hmm. just thinking about the glasses. That's why I thought you were X-ray. Oh no. But um, yeah. <laughs> I remember. I mean, when you're at a black school and a, a movie comes out about a black cop, right? You ain't Come gonna on. forget. Come you ain't gonna on, forget you can't it. Forget that. I mean, the last one was Stomp the Yard, right? Well, yeah. I mean, for, what that, down, for, yeah. for what that word, <laughs> yeah. what it was worth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but to, to actually, that would be my first film. That'll be your first film. School days, and wow. the fact that I said I was going to get it and got, got it. it. But that's, you got to you got to put it out there. Not only do you have to put it out there, but you have to work on making it happen. You can't just be sitting at home dreaming. You got to put about out. It. You got to put out there, and you got you got to make the effort. You got to make it. You got to put forth the effort. You got to put the effort. The effort gonna meet, and the universe will meet you somewhere. Right. Somewhere here's in the a, middle. Here's another effort. They were shooting a movie called A Soldier's Play, A Soldier's Story. Yes. Right. Um, Reuben Cannon was casting it over at uh, Paramount. Paramount? No. Uh, over in Washington in Culver City. Mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't get an audition. I couldn't get, not get an audition. So uh, me being brilliant as I am, I said, fuck it. I went and rented a security guard uniform. I had like $35 left. I rented a security guard uniform and I climbed the wall. Mm -hmm. Walked in the office. The wall. Let me tell you something, man. Wait, you and rented a security. At, how did you get the exact security guard? You, you got the exact security guard. Just Same any, color. It's a uniform. Oh, my God. Okay. I, I didn't walk through the front door. Okay, I climbed the, you climbed the wall. So yeah. I get in there, you know, I'm sweating, I'm nervous, and I'm like, um, here's my picture and resume. I'd just like to get an audition, please. He's like, well, who are you? How'd you get in here? Uh, security? <laughs> and they're like, security? <laughs> they kicked me out. Oh, my God. They kicked me out. I'm like, y'all should at least let me audition because of, I tried. It's the effort alone. Right. It's the effort alone. Come on. I'm new. Come on. Oh I was so devastated, man. So devastated. So devastated. But the point of the story is you got to try. Because here's my whole theory, and this is why I still live by today. You got nothing to lose. What are you, what are you worried about? You got nothing to lose. Nobody know you. So what you got to lose? You got to go for it. You got to go for it. You got to be smart and you got to be courteous. Courte you got to have some courtesy about it, but, but you got nothing to lose. You got nothing to lose. So sitting back dreaming and hoping somebody's going to knock you door, I wish I it's a joke. Yeah. You got to go for it. If you hear about something, do something. What they say now, you see something, say something. Well, what is that? Yeah, you got to go for it. Go for it. So, One more thing. Fame, movie, Debbie Allen, Corey Graffin. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I get in. They had a rubber mat floor, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have no dance shoes. So I'm barefooted, you know, trying to dance this choreography. Mm -hmm. And um, I get him and I say, next. Come to the front. I get up there and I'm dancing, dancing. Bam! Fall on the floor. I get up. <laughs> dancing, dancing. Bam! Fall on the floor. And it's like, thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, God. Oh God! You hear me? That's what I said. Oh my God! It's over! <laughs> it's over! In front of Debbie Allen, alumnus, and I'm just falling like a drunk bum, you know, because I had no footing and my feet were sticking, and uh -huh. it was just horrible. Yeah, yeah. But you gotta go. You gotta go for you it, gotta man. Go for it. You gotta go for it. You gotta go. For you gotta it. go for it every time. 
I, I still I, being that I, I can't help but ask you, you're friends with with <laughs> Shelton and Samuel. <laughs> Let me tell you and, something. And then I, you must give them shit about going to Moore House. Well, Samuel um, being Samuel L. Jackson and Shelton being Spike Lee. Well, they because they have a, a, a respect for Howard University, they know not to tread over there. <laughs> uh, it's unspoken. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, Spike has been very good to me. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done seven Spike Lee movies. He would call us every summer to shoot a film. It was almost like summer boot camp. Every you, summer we would shoot a film. Because you didn't do the right thing? School days, do the right thing, more better blues, mm-hmm. Malcolm X. Uh, um, Crooklyn, mm-hmm. uh, Jungle Fever, yeah, you know, just just kept coming and kept coming. Yeah, that's cool. So that's he, it. you know, he gets props even if he did go to Morehouse. Even if he did to Morehouse. Yeah. Hey, you, you, now Sam, um, Sam Jackson, or I'm sorry, Samuel L. Jackson, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, we met on school days. Mm-hmm. Um, we both lived in New York. Mm-hmm. He lived down the street from me, and we would hang out. Okay. And then because of Do the Right Thing, we was always working together. Mm-hmm. We became boys. And, uh, and then when, after Jungle Fever, he blew up. Yes. And, uh, and then they said, you, you know, you can hire an assistant. No, first of all, you can hire a stand-in. Then you can hire an assistant. Okay. So I became a stand-in. All right. You know, and then I was interviewing people to be his assistant. I was like, this is some dumb shit. I can take this job? Why am I <laughs> interviewing said- people for him? <laughs> I'll do it. Put these resumes right. to the side yeah, okay. here. Okay, no, thank you. So then I, I, I <laughs> Next was Next interview, Sam. Right. <laughs> then well, I was yeah. like, this is dumb. Yeah, okay. You know? Okay. So I, I was his personal assistant for like 12 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, 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 A Morehouse man. It's okay. Mm. Mm. So what is... T- you've had so many experiences. I mean, many movies. Uh, what was your favorite movie you worked on? I haven't done it yet. No. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, probably. Uh, it's going to be the Bison Project. Booyah. It's about Booyah. time. Um, <laughs> the Kelly R. Giffen Project. That's yeah. from Howard to Hollywood. <laughs> Cycle two. <laughs> probably uh, Drop Squad. Yeah. It, that's because um, brothers from Howard University wrote that. Thank you very much. Yes, they Produced did. it and directed it. Hello. Um, and. It was called, it was a short, we shot a short first called The Session, and mm-hmm. um, I took it to Spike Lee, mm-hmm. and um, that Morehouse guy, and I said, yo, dude, you got to check this out, man, we're trying to get this film made. Mm-hmm. He was like, let me see it, and he saw it, he loved it, he took the Universal, when he first got his first three-picture Universal deal, Yeah, and they produced it. So, just just the, the, the <coughs> evolution of it becoming some brothers from Howard shooting something, mm-hmm. to all of a sudden, we're at Universal Studios shooting a major feature film. Yeah. Just that whole thing was incredible to watch it. And to also watch what was supposed to be end up to what it was. Ah. That was part of the process, but it was also disappointing because on paper, you know, it was brilliant. You know, the short, the short was the session that was brilliant. And it was just supposed to extend. Extend Short. And it turned into something else. Something different. And then the interpretation of it was like, oh, you guys are hazing. No, it was never about hazing. No. You know what I mean? It was about us getting right and pulling our people back in and saving ourselves from ourselves. Yeah. And it kind of missed the boat based on Universal thought that shit was too heavy and they needed to fluff it up a little bit and turn it into buffoonery. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And. Got it. Eric LaSalle, I mean, the soul glow. What? what? Well, <laughs> well, oh, you're cringing, man. Uh, you're cringing. Well, here, here's the problem with okay. that. The character that Eric LaSalle played was supposed to be an asshole. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's right your own paper. Yeah. So when you read it, it's not like you're saying, I wonder if he's an asshole. No, you're an asshole. Uh-huh. And then he gets on set and decides he don't want to be an asshole. That's like having a sex scene in a, in a script and all of a sudden you get on set and like, you know what? I'm really not feeling like sex today. No, it's part of the story. We need you to be an asshole. <laughs> so there's a contrast so we can bring you back. You know what I mean? Oh, now, so, now he's concerned about it. This is not time to be concerned about your image right now. I get it. Oh, you know, exactly. Wow. So, again, that goes with the evolution of watching where it was on paper and how it developed and what you actually see on the screen, you know. But, yeah, that was my favorite. Okay. I think. And just 
your worst experience on? I don't do worse, buddy. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I, I went to I went to Howard. Damn it, we don't okay. play that. There is okay. no worst in my life. Okay. Okay. No, I've been no. Nothing that bad. No. Not, not worth talking about. No. Nothing to call. No, 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 no. If if there was something that I'm like, okay, here it go. <laughs> Wait, you find? I just one? got a flashback. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you ready for this? Yes, I'm ready. I think it's called um, Superfly Two. Yeah, don't go get it. No. But here, here's a perfect example. You know, as an actor, you get an opportunity to play a lead role. You're not gonna take it. Uh huh. You uh, know what I mean? Here, here, not only is the lead role, but we're gonna pay you to do this. I gotta take it. But then, when you are in a van riding and you don't know where the location is, and they just jump out the van and say, "We're gonna shoot right here." And you jump out at a payphone, <laughs> and they hand you guns, and then the community's coming around, and literally, this is gr- gr- guerrilla filmmaking. The community is standing as close as I am to you right now, and I got a gun in my hand, and I'm about to shoot somebody in the head at a phone booth. Shoot that motherfucker. Shoot that oh. motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we rode around in a van looking for some place to shoot. They just stopped the van and get out and pull the cameras out. The Teamsters stole all the equipment because we wasn't using Teamsters. Do you hear me? They took the trucks. <laughs> this is my last. Only in New York City. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say I was out here. No, that was in New- that's a New York thing. Yeah, that's a New York that's thing. A New York thing. Yeah. Man, um, hey, wow, that's, man, that's. You Close could. your mouth, baby. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> she's in like, really? Yeah. We have a segment here called Running with the Bison. Mm. It's where we have a little random fun, you know, some crazy rapid fire questions. Nothing to do with nothing. To answer yes, you will go Leonard. <laughs> to say no, you will go Leno. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, are you ready for to run with the bison? Leonard. <laughs> Very good, very good. Um, skydiving. Leno. <laughs> Gone on a blind date. Um, Leno. Len- Leonard. Fuck it, Leonard. <laughs> I don't even know how they went back. I thought like, he went back. Fucking win it. Win it. Flown in a helicopter. Leonard. Skinny dipping. Leonard. <laughs> Had to pay a fine in the past six months. Leno. Witnessed a shooting. Leonard. <laughs> Owned your dream car. Leonard. What was it? What was it? Convertible Jack. <sighs> Body piercings? Leno. <laughs> Tattoo. Leno. And as always, in the end, manscaping. The fuck is that? <laughs> manscaping? Manscaping is, as I've learned, is when you um, shave your nether regions. You mean shave your balls? <laughs> that are above? Oh. The, anyway, that area. Leonard! Uh, well, all right! <laughs> hey. Hey. hey! And see. Wait, 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 wait. Who asked that? Who put that question in there? Who? Okay. <laughs> Just check it. I'm, I'm just glad, glad it you. I'm, I'm glad, glad you built him out of that. I'm bit. glad you, I'm glad you yeah. said Yeah. And let me tell you why. Let me t- I'll tell you why I do that. Because I discovered it looks bigger when there's no hair around it. And that's what and that's, that was me. That was me. I assume that I assume yeah. that if you I assume you get a little bit more visual. Yeah. It, it, it yeah. makes sense. I mean, I haven't done it, but I'm just saying yeah, it makes you, sense. You might want to think about it. You know but what? Just, but know this, 10 days later, mm, you got some issues. Cuz it grows back. Like fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, and on that note, man, uh, <laughs> where will we see you next, Leonard? <laughs> well, you know, uh, <laughs> um, there's a couple projects in development right now. Okay. Waiting on some funding. Mm-hmm. Um, and let me just say this real quick. People talk a lot of shit out here, and they blow a lot of smoke. So uh-huh. wait till it's on paper. Uh-huh. Um, and then sometimes... <laughs> Even when it's on paper, it still doesn't happen. Only because there's several times where I've actually started working on characters and roles for a film mm-hmm. where um, I'm playing an important person or autobiography of somebody, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, it just disappears. But I'm, I'm like, I got a pay or play contract. Okay, let's sue. They ain't got no money. What do you do? 
You know, so those kind of things happen. So um, there's a couple of films in development. Um, one's supposed to go up in October. One's mm-hmm. supposed to happen in July. But we'll see. It could happen. Exactly. I mean, you know, I'm positive. Right, right. It's Hollywood. Yeah. Um, the magic of Hollywood. I just finished... Um, I just did a play. Well, I did just do a play. I just won an award for best lead actor in a in a play from the NAACP Image Awards. Okay. Um, so you know, I kind of got excited about that because like, they like me. They like they me. Mean. Right. So yeah, and we'll see. You know, I just finished a play in Hollywood called uh, Infidelity. Um, it ran at uh, the Stellar Adler Theater um, like three weeks ago. And okay. We did that, and you know. I didn't come out here to do theater. Let me make that very clear to you. <laughs> um, I lived in New York 19 years. I did my theater thing. I love theater. It's the core. I think everybody needs to do theater for a foundation mm-hmm. um, and so you can have your tools. But I didn't come out here to do that. I came out here to make some money. Uh-huh. There's no money in theater. Sorry, it's not. That's one thing they also taught you at Howard. They didn't even tell you about film. They just said, Broadway, Broadway, Broadway. Broadway. And you get out here, it's like, that's 1200 a week. That, that's not going to cut the mustard. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, the reason why I'm, I'm doing theater, and this is a note for the kids out there, is because doing something is better than doing nothing. And yeah. while I'm waiting for something to happen, you need to continue to sharpen your skills and your tools so you're prepared and ready when your opportunity comes. And you never know who's going to see you or what you might get in that experience of doing a show. Exactly. So that's why I do theater in Los Angeles. Man. Thank you. Brother, you have advised, informed. Let's go. Let's give us your best. Bison, H, you know, call. Please, Bison, Let me me prepare for this one. (laughs) H, you, you know. Uh Ah. Only the big boys know. (laughs) 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 Thank you again for taking time to come out. My pleasure. How can we reach you? Uh, you want my phone number? Hey, man. You know what? I think Kelly wants your number, man. <laughs> <laughs> my email is lynjoy38 at cs.com. And your social I'm media? on Facebook. Facebook, okay. Uh, I'm tweeting. I'm a tweeter. A at, tweeter. I don't know. You ain't, you at, you ain't know? I don't know. I, don't, I just tweet. I don't know. I just get these little, that little bird comes up. And I'm like, oh, that must be a tweet. Okay. Yeah. I think it's Leonard Thomas at. I guess. That's pro- that probably what it is. I think. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, please look for the Bison Chats every Monday on iTunes and feel free to post your comments, questions, hate speech on Twitter at KRG Bison Project using the hashtag Bison Chats. Got to give another shout out to Eric L. Powell Jr., a.k.a. ELPJ and Jay Blocko, who provided the Bison Chats theme song, Greer Spry. Our amazing social media coordinator, Hilliard Guest, our production consultant, who is not a bison, uh, but we still like him. Yeah, okay, okay. Diamond, <laughs> okay. shout out to Diamondique Drummond, our bison chess intern for the day. Also not a bison, oh. but she is from the city of Brotherly Love, a.k.a. Uh, Philly. A.k.a. AKA Filthy like City. Her. No, We like her. <laughs> and as always, our producers, Stacey Alfonso and Kelly R. Griffin. Yeah, yeah. Again, I am your host, Rod Email. You can find me at Bison Chats, host at krgbisonproject.com. And look, hey, if you wake up, you got half a chance. I'll see you next week on The Yard.